let's let's talk just a second on apps. I, I don't have the uh, cord which allows me to run my iPad off the uh, screen. I just want to talk about a couple of best practices that jump to mind. So uh, can I see pause? Who out there has iPhone, iPod Touch, or tablet? Yay, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Anybody here played with BBC Player? A couple. What do I love about this? I don't love it, but there's one thing I love that offers two important principles. You see that button at the top left there? It says live. It doesn't mean that the news is live. It means I hit one button, and you know what I hear instantly? I hear BBC Radio. There's two things I love about this. One of them is that when I'm on the BBC News, I could be thinking about the website. I might be thinking about the TV station. But at least in some part of my brain, I've probably heard a BBC radio webcast, like most of us have, maybe on the shortwave or extracted somewhere else. It's intuitive. What the app does actually fits with what the company does. It's a media property. And the idea of turning my, my, my tablet or my phone into a, like a radio, that's really simple, easy, and intuitive. Love all that. Second, it's not 4K HD 3D trying to stream over the wireless networks we just discussed not being able to handle capacity. Audio streams are nice and skinny. You're building an app and you need, you know, a lot of very, very heavy graphics, you're going to break the network, you're going to break the phone. An audio stream, nice, simple, elegant, a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, value, I would argue, in that. Anybody played with the ABC News app? Nobody? Oh, come on. you got to do, go download this. It's the most wonderfully snazzy thing. So see this globe? What you do is you spin it with your fingers like a globe, and you go up and down, and then you tap on it, and it explodes. And it's somebody spent $5 million designing this. It is a thing of beauty and glory, and it is the most hideous app you have seen in your entire life because it's brutal. Who the hell has ever navigated through a news site by spinning a globe and popping things up? It, it, it's slow, the stories are awful, and as you can see, you can't really, because of the fisheye effect, I have no idea what's going on on the periphery. It's eye candy, but it's, it's poisoned Halloween eye candy. It's just disgusting. Don't get blown away by what's possible. Pay attention to what the user interface is. Here's, here's a lovely one. Flipboard. Pause for flipboard, please. What are you people? None of you download stuff? Anyway, Flipboard is just a gorgeous app. You know what they did? This is Twitter. If you ever looked at Twitter, it's, it's a really text heavy, and, and all they do is they, they, they aggregate it, they strip it out, and they pop it into a magazine format. And you turn the pages, just steal. People have been reading magazines for two centuries, and they love them. People, when they buy magazines, they pay for subscriptions. And they read the ads. You know in newspapers when you turn it, you hate the ads. They're ugly and gross black and white things and you ignore them. People buy magazines in order to look at the ads. Very, very glossy. So this kind of interface, steal from what works in traditional media, even when you're in new media, I think is a really nice best practice. I know I'm talking about apps. Hopefully that has some resonance for the folks in the room. Apps are a big deal. They matter. They're that software stack. Um, so really quickly before I, I close off here, I just want oh, one, one more. Um, New York Times web app uh, uh, for, for the tablet or for the iPhone. Really nice, good banner ads. You can't see it here, but in the top right, if I tap twice, you ever send somebody a newspaper article? You read a good story and you want to send it to your friends? I can, with one click, publish this to Facebook, or with two clicks, publish it to a, an email list, or with one click back to Twitter. All of it completely shared. The New York Times uses a proper shortener. It's just lovely with your apps. Please tap in to 500 million on people on Facebook. Don't, don't ignore social media. It's enormous. It's huge. It's not going away. And so any app that leverages the power of, of a platform like Facebook, Facebook, like Twitter, or even email, which is a bit of a, you know, 1.5 technology, nonetheless, it's all about the network. It's all about the social graph. And the more you can spread information when you, when you have an app, the more social it inherently is, the better it will be.